you might be the set it and forget it type of investor, but the recent swings in the market have some asking, is it time to rebalance my portfolio? That means selling the winners that have had their day and the losers that may never have theirs. I talked recently to David Kaufman, president of Westcourt Capital, about how and when it's best to make a shift. Now is definitely the time to rebalance if, first of all, you were lucky enough to be in U.S. equities last year because a lot of Canadians are very Canadian-centric in, in their focus, and so they end up being more sort of TSX-focused, more resourcey. And so uh, 2013 was not the year for Canadian equities that it was in the U.S. This year has been pretty good at the start of the year, so it's the same issue. You start at, let's just say, 60-40, the traditional 60% equities and 40% bonds. Bonds sort of stagnate, maybe even lose a little bit of money because interest rates go up. I'm talking about on paper. Yeah. And these equities go up, 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 up. So what starts at 60-40 can end up being more like 65-35 or even 70-30 just because you have one going up so much faster than the other. What's wrong with that? Uh, as you look at, at why you have a 60-40 portfolio in the first place, it's that you want part of the portfolio to be really conservative, sort of a ballast against the more volatile equities. And when you get out of whack, you do have the potential to make even more money because now 70% of your money is in equities. But that also means that if the ax were to fall, that the cut would be even deeper. So as hard as it is to consider selling your winners because they've gone up, 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 yeah. these profits aren't real until you actually sell something. And then the idea then is to rebalance and to take part of the money out of equities and put it back into something a little more conservative. So the discipline, first of all, is figuring out what the mix is for you. you the traditional is 60-40. Would you still say 60-40 in, in an era like this when that 40 is sitting in basically dead money? I mean, it's, it's going to kind of hold your capital for sure, but it might not even keep up with inflation. Yeah, there's actually two issues here. One of which is exactly what you just said, is that 40% in bonds isn't going to get you much and the real returns, that is after inflation, might could be negative. Yeah. The other issue is that equities have not exactly been much of a friend from time to time for different people, you know, over the last six years, certainly over the last five years, not so bad. Um, so as you look at that, you think, let's not worry as much about whether it's in equities and bonds. Let's worry about a little more risk versus a little less risk. In other words, take a look at the risk of the portfolio altogether. And this comes to what, what I refer to, I, I borrow this from medicine, the minimum required dose. What is your objective? take the minimum amount of risk required to achieve that objective. And we all know that equities are riskier than many other investments. So you don't want to overload on equities where, yes, the returns can be highly positive, but we also know that the returns can be highly negative and, and that can happen very quickly. And to your point, the other 40%, the other 50%, whatever it may be, we have to look for alternatives to just owning bonds when they're just going to sit there. You know, there's two ways to be an anchor. There's the way that you can anchor a portfolio, and there's an anchor that slows down the ship. Right. right now, it's much more the latter, where owning bonds is slowing down the ship. What are some of the other alternatives to that kind of investment where you do need the safety to, to be the ballast? Right. So w one is, is sort of to go from vanilla to chocolate, which is, okay, normal bonds, you move over into the high yield space. Yeah. So high yield bonds have a little bit of an equity component to them. Because they're high yield, that means that you have more risk involved, which means that if the equity markets do continue to go up, you get a little bit of a lift. But because of where you are, as they say, in the capital stack, that you're no, you don't own equity, you're very likely to get paid back. And then if you want to go more Neapolitan or a little more exotic, you look into other areas like tactical hedged equity ETFs ideas where you have ETFs for mutual funds, because these are available to everybody, right. that they can transfer over time depending on different algorithms, and we won't go into the depths of that right now, uh, where they expose at different times different amounts of the portfolio to equity risk or bond risk or high yield bond risk. Now, one of the things, of course, is how often you do this. One school of thought on investing is it's like making beef jerky. You should set it and forget it. Uh, so in terms of how often you look at your portfolio and say, this is done well, I need to and take profit and rebalance? Is it monthly, quarterly, annually? When do you do it? You know, it's a little bit like flossing. It'd be nice to do it more often, but few of us do. So the short answer is probably now is a good time because I doubt that many of the mm -hmm. viewers have done it any time recently. Uh, but at, at a minimum, once a year, you should stand back and take a look for two reasons. Number one, a year is a long enough time to see whether you're out of balance. But also, over the course of the year, our own objectives change, our own constraints change, our spending habits change. And so that whether you have a portfolio that is you know, all weather for the different types of investors that you've become over time, is not an obvious fact. It's something that you have to put to a test. So at least once a year, 
people that do it more often than that are probably responding to false signals, and you end up no better off doing it, say, monthly or quarterly than annually. So just let's say I was lucky enough to be in U.S. equities last year. Mm -hmm. I'm up 30 percent. I take some profit off. Do I put it into the bond side? Is that how I rebalance? It's just one for one? I think what you'd probably, well, it's one for one if all you want to do is, is sort of hit balance. the bit of 60-40. Yeah. Uh, but if you can be a little more sophisticated than that and say, I like this, I don't mind having a little bit of this equity, but that's where the high yield bonds come into play. Right. Get a little bit of a, of a higher yield certainly than you would on investment grade, but it's sort of you're taking a little bit of risk. So it's sort of you're giving it a bit of a hybrid approach, I think, when it comes down to that. All right. Thanks. Thank you.